my undergrad degree was in applied math and in South Spain mostly had me teaching math and statistics. Uh, I'm Adam Martinez. I'm a software engineer, but that's kind of just my day job. Um, I recently, since I graduated college, I've been getting interested in like urban planning, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's ways to make cities, I guess, more efficient and better for everyone. Part of that's yeah, sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that, and then I've just been trying to get more involved in local politics. So yeah, I also. Uh, like reporting a lot, so yeah. that kind of helps. I don't think we knew that about you yet, <laughs> so everyone pack that away. We got a burden. Yeah, got me on the bird. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Well, I love it. Well, thanks. Thanks for doing the intro. We'll, we'll make sure that the folks get to use themselves next next month. Um, okay, so last month, because we were voting on the May minutes and we had Mitchell come kind of the last second, we moved it around. We're going to revote just to have it locked in that this is a very orderly vote. The main minutes have not changed since the last time we voted on them. So we will go through that and then we'll also um, follow up with the uh, June minutes. So we'll do the main minutes first if anyone wants to move to vote um, to approve the main minutes. Okay. All right. And do you want to do the, the voting as well? Yes. Rachel? Okay. Um, Carrie Albright. I vote yes to approve. Yes. Nadia Kane. Yes. Matt Baldy? Yes. Michael Lewin? Yes. Adam Martinez? Yes. Megan Murphy? Yes. David Parkhurst? Yes. And motion passes. We've done it again. Thank you all. And we, we approve June minutes. Second. Perfect. Seven. Seven. Okay, that's why we cheered yeah, when you yeah, walked yeah. in. Yeah. Well, I was going to abstain, but I guess I better not. <laughs> <laughs> There's no threat. There's no threat. No Nadia um, Payne? Yes. yes. Thank you. Matt Baldy? Yes. Michael Litwin? Yes. Adam Martinez? Yes. Megan Murphy? Yes. David Parkers? Yes. Carrie Albright? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all for going through that. Thank you for the Feedback on any um, of the May and June minutes. It's always nice to have people take a look at those, see if they, they feel like we've covered our bases. And Brenna always did a great job, but appreciate you taking a look. All right, so we have time for public comments in case there's anyone lingering outside. Um, do we have anyone online that's, that would like to uh, nope. chime in? Great. All right, we're going to go ahead and move forward. It is 6.08, by the way, so let's just keep on <laughs> Uh, for old business, we have um, the 48 resolution of support. That was something we talked about uh, last month because we had received a request to um, to send through a resolution that was provided to us. There's a little bit of dialogue about, is this something that makes sense for us? Do we have questions about it? Um, do we want to change the language in the document? So because Matt's talked to, to Chris a couple of times, I figured it'd be a good fit for just sort of leading the conversation around what this resolution may, may become for us or not. Give me just a second to find that email. Also, well, we're going to start doing packets more formally for our meetings. We've never really done that in the past. So as there are documents and things like that that we want to be sharing, um, that will be included when we send out the, the agenda. When you say it's great that it's included up there, I was prepared to have to read it to people. But OK, I know when we spoke about it last, um, there were concerns about what exactly we're supporting, whether this is bus routes or a ride share type model. Um, also, just kind of how important our support was in general. We, we wanted details and context before we could get, uh, before we took it to any kind of vote. Um, I was told that this is very early stages, but they are talking about bus routes, not the ride share type model. Um, the BT is doing that or is about to be doing that in a couple of underserved areas, but generally speaking, was they're talking about trying to get a bus out there and what they want is to just show that there is public support for public transit um, expanded beyond city limits. That's only been possible by ordinance for about a year now and it hasn't actually happened yet. So um, they're reaching out to different groups just to show that generally speaking, there is support for more bus routes. Um, so I 
personally think that's great. I don't know how much weight this will carry, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to look at the language of this and see if we wanted to tweak any of it before calling a vote. Um, because I, I mean, I'll just say personally, I'm, I'm generally in favor of um, of approving an ordinance, but let's make sure we like the language first, or I mean, a letter of recommendation, I guess. Did they have any kind of study on what the ridership was likely to be? They do not. Um, they're basically just saying that it's a it's a growing area, both from an education and business standpoint. So they aren't looking at it as a, an important hub. But there is no um, advanced knowledge of just how um, utilized such a route would be. I agree with Matt that I strongly support the initiative and the idea that they are looking at a bus model and not car share to me alleviates any concerns that they're going to make some sort of method that would be less environmentally friendly than having students drive independently. Um, so I I am fully comfortable with the current language and would support it as is. Is that a motion? <laughs> I don't know. There was so much discussion last time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to well, I was gonna say take a minute to, yeah. to read it if you are yeah. aren't familiar. I have, I have one physical guy yeah. that helps the printed one off today because again I was prepared to read it, but otherwise it's up on the screen. <laughs> I know that one thing that, that I had mentioned had to do with, so this is a, a pretty theoretical language around the concept of doing something, and I think that I agree, and generally speaking, it seems like a, an idea that we could get behind, but I know that one of the things that we have kind of exchanged a little bit about was, if this does go forward, what is there any place for the environmental commission to weigh in on how it's being planned out um, as far as as far as basically what that development looks like so typically that's where like the ecpc would come in and and have the opportunity to speak to that so i don't know that it's a all of this hinges on us being able to but i do think that there is uh, an element that might make sense for us to say to express our eagerness of towards having some kind of future conversation or input or um, have this rich, like conversation come back to us as development starting or something like that, because right now it seems like it's just in the funding process. Right. So do you, are you suggesting adding any type of language on that or just and, uh, making clear that we would like to follow up and kind of be involved as it goes along? Because I'm, I'm guessing when the actual route stuff happens, that'll BT will make their decisions through whatever their process is. But um, yeah. Two questions. Um, what is this part 48? Where is it? And how big is it? Is it? I can, I can you know, say you can bring it to what's happening. Yeah. Is is that, yeah. By IV Tech. It, specifically, I think it's a Cook campus just north of Ivy Tech. So it's it's hitting Cook and Ivy Tech sort of in one. Cook as the business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can this be from the downtown terminal of the other bus routes? Or is it... Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that's I not it, confirmed. Right. I don't know if it would take a connecting one or if it would be direct from there. They, yeah, they're in the early stages. And that's where, I mean, I when I read this draft, my initial concern is are we, you know, throwing our weight behind something that we don't know much about, but upon more conversations and rereading, I thought, well, this is basically just straightforward language as to why public transit is favorable from an environmental standpoint. So um, that's, that's why I feel comfortable with saying, yeah, yeah, I'm all right with this and I support the project, um, even though it is it is early and we don't know a lot of details. So it doesn't seem like anything's you know misrepresented in any way. So. I don't know where it is on the map. I, it's it's this huge, it's a huge campus. It's like not finding a good way to look it up on the Google Maps. Oh, it's barely visible, but it's basically this, um, yeah, huge huge series of of buildings and warehouses, things like that, on the far west side. I think it's um, 
Yeah, not by Ivy Tech, I guess. Is yeah, I think US North, that would be pretty, I guess that's somewhat substantially outside of city limits. Mm -hmm. How many employees are out there? It's a great question. I don't have the answer to that either. Are you, are you just curious about if it's going to actually be used by people or is it right. that? How many people are there that might use it as opposed to driving their cars now? <laughs> That's a good question. I think I assume that they've got an estimate somewhere for that, just because it's they're they're proposing it, and I, I assume that financially speaking, it needs to be worth it. But they also did mention the school, so it's possible that they're saying there are people who will be more inclined to use these, you know, this the Ivy Tech services and, and programs and stuff like that if they can get to it more easily. So I think that there is a the the you know the kind of equity and access to transportation things like that that they're also thinking about but obviously for us it's an environmental thing but bring me around hello mitchell hello. welcome we're discussing if we want any revisions to any of this language in the supporting the park 48 public transit sort of letter of recommendation here uh yeah again it doesn't really doesn't really have anything in, in, in the form of teeth. It's it's mostly just saying there is public support for this, and and ours, I guess, specifically saying there are environmental reasons that we support public transportation, which seems like a fair representation. But if if anything up there you would want changed, removed, or added, um, just take a look. I like the idea of encouraging them to come back once there's a little bit more mm -hmm. concrete plan, but. I don't know if we're changing the language would be the best way to do that. I don't yeah, know. Sure. right. Yeah, that, that, my gut feeling was well, I, I'm okay with the resolution as it's written, but I, I'd be happy to express to Chris personally or the EC could reach out to um, to him as as he represents the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Commerce um, to say that yeah, we are we are interested in keeping in touch at each stage. Yeah, I would be personally opposed to adding that as formal language that I don't want to be people who are placing barriers in the way of good environmental projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. Like as we got through Sean, in a lot of ways, these are limited by like employee man hours, right? But in getting them done. Kind of just to like, I think I've heard a couple of times people have said like, this is an environmental support for environmental reasons. And I think there's a lot of factors that they're working with, whether that be economic or like capacity. Mm -hmm. But like, I think when you boil it down, the language as is, is very good because it is our job to say this is environmentally good. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's important that like we consider all the other things, I think that this is very substantial as it is. And that pretty much anything that gets people out of cars is going to be a good environment to me. I guess it boils down to the city isn't going to do it if there aren't enough people on, out there to take the bus. So I therefore uh, move that we accept this language and, and send it off. Second. Okay. Um, and then Corinna also joined on the line. Hi, Corinna. Okay, I'll start it with the votes. Matt Falby? Yes. Michael Litwin? Yes. Adam Martinez? Yes. Megan Murphy? Yes. Mitchell Owens? Yes. David Parker? Yes. Karina Tinkersley? I'm going to abstain because I don't know what we're talking about, to be honest. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Carrie Albright? Uh -huh. Yes. Nadia Kane? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, so I can follow up with Chris um, with this letter and include the note that we would love to stay in the loop as we get to the next phase. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, everyone, for the discussion and consideration. Appreciate a nice dialogue. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Heat Watch campaign updates. Um, so if I really would like to give an update, you're welcome to if you'd rather I jump in again too, but happy to um, give folks an idea of where we're at as far as the as far as the other project is. Well, you might have the most recent knowledge of where we stand. Um, we were we were tasked with identifying ten locations relatively well distributed across the 
city of Bloomington for air quality monitors. Um, we've identified most of those, and yeah, I'm just gonna say, Carrie, if you have more information, you can share. Yeah, yeah. So Nadia and Matt did a great job of reaching out to folks all across the city of Bloomington to, to find spots, and we, I would say. We were able to cover the vast majority of them, and then I reached out to Sean, and, and she was able to put me in touch with a few other folks. So we've got a a really nice distribution of folks um, across the city for for these uh, air air beams, I suppose. Um, so I joined a call with Sean and the Kappa Strategies folks, who are the ones who are sort of facilitating this across a lot of different cities. Um, I think the nearest one is Fort Wayne, and is doing a similar thing. And so right now, the they are just kind of getting all their final ducks in a row at which point they will distribute the beacons to be installed. And uh, as we all may recall, our, we had a few folks on the EC who offered to help with the installation process. Seems like it's gonna be really easy, really like security is the actual biggest concern, just meaning stability um, to where they go and that they're in a, a space that's appropriate for the airflow and all that. Um, but yeah, but that's we're just kind of sitting on, on that and just waiting for um, those devices and also the, the training video there, a, there should be a, an updated version of that for folks who would do. Um, theoretically, we would be there to install them, but I know there are a lot of folks who feel pretty comfortable doing it themselves. So either way, we'll provide Sean with the names, addresses, and um, uh, an image of where the Airbnb will go or, or Beacon will go um, or once it's installed. I believe all the sites that have been selected are residential. So security hopefully isn't much of an issue because no one's walking onto other people's lots to tinker with things. Yeah, we had one conversation um, of a building kind of in that, that uh, sort of northwestish corner of town that they're trying to figure out what would be the best sort of safest place for that um, device to go. But yeah, I think it's mainly residential, which is totally fine. It's it's an easy way to get permission and be able to go pick them up, pick them down for the time limit. So yeah, it's moving along. Sean sent a message saying she is very deeply grateful for everyone who offered their homes and especially the two of you for like putting that time and effort into figuring out where the heck we're going to do this and reaching out to so many organizations too because getting the city involved, getting the, the community involved um, is a big part of this. So it's nice that it's individual residents and that we at least brought the topic to different facilities and stuff. So yeah. And before we move on, um, Sean's team asked me to share the heat survey. I'm not sure if it was presented last month, um, but it's live now. Um, it's available both in English and Spanish. And the ask is to have residents uh, share their experiences on uh, heat and how they cope with heat and what types of cooling strategies and resources they'd like to see implemented throughout the city. And uh, should you be so inclined, feel free to share the flyer, and I can send the flyer uh, separately um, for those that want to share it. Perfect. I think I made word of that to everybody, but it was probably tucked within something else, so I made that under the radar. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great. And you have a chance to win a $20 gift card. So if you're, you know, in, in an emergency situation looking to replenish <laughs> that, that fund, you got it. <laughs> Um, okay, and so the throttle is long, which is kind of winding up here. So cool. Thanks for sharing that, Rachel. Um, okay, well, we will move on to the next item. So this is this is sort of just an open call for working groups. I have one note that I want to make sure we talk about, but as far as the working groups go that we've that have been gathering, are there any updates on other conversations you've been having, projects we've been working on, or anything that you're looking for maybe more activity or or uh, assistance with? Water didn't meet this month. Uh, did anyone have a chance to reach out to the stormwater folks here? Mm -hmm. I can text her. Okay. That works. I forget what is the the next step is just sitting down with them and kind of just talking about. We've got we sat down a little bit, but just really trying to hash out like what can we do for like helping with outreach and developing like. What messages do they want to get out and have to get those out, basically? Do you know off the top of the head? After, do you know when the next meeting is off the top of the head? Um, I'll just do the okay. but That's when I was kind of thinking if we had to put three or four kind of things, so. Whatever's the first thing for like two weeks. 
That's Sounds good. Um, so Brenna, I know that you've been um, just up to all sorts of Portuguese business. As far as the biodiversity working group, I know we talked about um, we talked about some different stuff and things we're gonna try and take care of this summer. Is there anything that you would like some assistance on or wanna share any updates for? Uh, no, I don't really have any updates right now. The uh, biodiversity working group did not meet this month. Um, I will try to make sure that we get to meet next month. Um, so, cause I've been out of the country and Shannon has also been on her adventure. So it didn't seem um, really worthwhile to try to make a meeting, but I will probably be personally trying to work on some of those action items. And then maybe I'll try to bring something to the next uh, biodiversity working group meeting, but I don't really have anything right now um, to share or to update. Uh, but if anyone else on that group wants to jump in, if they've been thinking about what we've been doing, I don't know. I've I've been enjoying Portugal, so. <laughs> and that's totally fine. That's, that sounds pretty wonderful. Um, well, great. Well, if you have any interest, um, so Karina, do you mind like just recapping kind of what we talked about the last meeting as far as what we're making kind of our priority for this year? Yeah, so I'm going to do it without uh, notes in front of me, but um, basically, uh, one of the things that we are working on is trying to pursue B City USA certification with the city of Bloomington and potentially trying to partner with the university to also do that simultaneously. Um, so what that kind of entails is um, like kind of a stepwise process where we have to um, draft sort of this um, we have to draft something to be adopted by the city council ultimately and so we're going to have to go through a couple of phases of getting input about those things finding partners with the city and um, just ensuring that it, it like fits with the city's goals and um, trying to get buy in with uh, what we're up to. Um, other things. Uh, I might need to popcorn to someone. Um, that's mostly what I remember. No, that was great. That was great. And that was, that was kind of just like a reintroduction of the topic. Um, yeah, the, the next the next step, if I remember, is reaching out to some of those contacts that we have and just sort of beginning to think through what that language could look like. Um, so it's a couple stages of uh, proposing that to the, to the council. So yeah, but it's a really cool idea. And it seems like it's not, um, not one of the more difficult things that we've done, it's just kind of getting through those steps of formalizing and, and becoming certified. So fingers crossed. Um, one thing I wanted to, to bring up was kind of, I guess, within the outreach um, working group is Bug Fest is coming up at the end of August. So I want to do a quick check on who is interested. I'm looking at Megan so much, but like <laughs> who's interested in tabling, who um, uh, has ideas for what we might bring to the table, anything like that that might be useful. But wanted to put that out there. August 24. 24. Yes. And uh, it's not at the hotel. Is it Switcher probably? It's a curse form. Yes. Oh, curse form. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. So it's a curse, which is lovely. Um, is anybody interested in raising their hand tentatively to be part of it? Thank God, Megan. Yes. I'll give a tentative hand. All right. I like it. Adam, thank you. Yeah. Same story. Sensitive from Matt as well. Okay. All right. I think I can probably do it. Oh, Mike, I love it. Thank you. Okay. Matt, sensitive. I'm going to try my hardest to be there as well because who doesn't love children learning about bugs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, if I remember correctly, not the shortest of events. So even just being there for a couple mm -hmm. hours yep. is. is it's great. We'll do shifts for sure. Mm -hmm. like four to six hours or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a very busy event. Yes. But we will just talk the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as what we do at the table, um, I mean, obviously, there's some of the materials that we have that are a bit more grown up related. But as far as things that would be more um, educational for kiddos, I can't get bug bingo out of my mind. Like that just can't, I don't know. If you made little bingo cards for kids, they could like put bug stickers on the ones they find or see out. Oh yeah, out that's and about. a nice idea. Uh, Seems like a good thing to dash yeah. out with the B City. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great point. 
Okay, I like bug bingo. Or, you know, what we could do is we could have a bug bingo that is for the happy native insects and then one for the not so great ones. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the idea of getting a bingo that you don't want. <laughs> Just be a good You button. squish the body onto that <laughs> little slice of a marker. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Strike that from the. Um, but I think it's a really fun idea, though, of like having kids to have that awareness of like looking to see if the insect that they're mm -hmm. observing is one from their bingo card. It's really cute. All right. Do we want to try to do the. Um, Having a lot of platform present and how does that connectivity plan markers or are we planning on sort of rebooting that? That's a good question. Because it, it's one of those things where if, if we're gonna roll with the model we have, I think it'd be great to get more markers on there. But if we're starting it fresh, then I guess there's it's less important to them. Mm -hmm. I I don't know what other people think about that, but my thought is it wouldn't hurt to have it. And maybe we don't prioritize it necessarily if we have other things that are working really well, but depending on what kind of interest we have from families saying, you know, oh, this looks really great, or oh, I really want to improve, you know, my, the the native species I have to have more native insects, or you know, kind of thinking through what it looks like to have private property. That would be not a bad idea to at least bring something that they can do that with. Some people, when you're talking about the brochures and deer resistant plants and whatever else, volunteer that, oh yeah, I did such and such with this area. And that's exactly what we're putting on the map. Mm -hmm. This is the things that they've done. So even if we're planning on remaking mm -hmm. the you know. mapping process, at some point, this would still be data points. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I guess I'd be in favor of still trying that. Yeah. I'm wondering, I'm guessing if we can get two tables set up, but I'm trying to imagine like if we make an L or something, there's an adult table. Right. right. Uh -huh. And it's like, because the whole event is so kid driven that I think getting folks to engage with how we've had it set up. So while, while the kids are touching the bugs, yeah. We're, yeah. we're talking to the parents about landscaping. Yeah, it was pretty much nice. how the item table worked last year. Yeah. One table was live bugs, the other table was like, here's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. As far as the specimens go, I will have a box that kids can touch if that is what we want to do again. Um, but yeah. Thank you for offering yes. that. I hope. Thank you. To it's my student. student. Yeah, yeah, thank you for your work. work. Yes. Okay. I tell them, hey, leave it with me. Here's what will happen to it. It will be destroyed, but kids will learn. Nice. Okay. Any other thoughts of what might be fun at the bug fest? Bug bingo, touchable bugs, born grown up stuff, no. uh, have tech connectivity plan opportunities. Um, anything else? Would you like me to make a bug bingo? Would you like to make a bug bingo? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Nadia. Thank you. Okay, I'll put this, uh, put a note about that and then I'll just kind of check in so in case things get busy. That sounds great. Thank you so much for offering that. And if you want to just sit up, hit me up. Yeah, if you have certain like bugs you want to see. Hmm? Are you gonna hand illustrate or are you gonna use oh, like, the cards? I mean I could, it would take it would take a little bit. I love it. I love it. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's a worthwhile. Well, I'm a broken record. record every year. Do you think we'll be a stamp? Uh, yes. I do. Yeah. yeah. If you make bingo, then you have your brown stamp. <laughs> yeah, he was saying like, hmm. yeah, I have not heard any confirmation. Yeah, I think we just carve our own potato stamps <laughs> next time. Listen, it's not sanctioned by Bugfest, but we get you going on your stamp. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, as folks have thoughts on other things that we might do with the table, um, bring them up because we're always trying to figure out how to. Have people want to learn more and be more engaged and um, obviously learn about things that are healthy in their, in their backyards and the things that they need to be wary of. Okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing left on that agenda item, uh, the new business here I added because this is something that we talked about doing for our 2025 EC um, sort of uh, priorities was we talked about lots of different ways of, of kind of staying engaged and one of the things that came up was a weed wrangle and people saying that doesn't like a lot of fun. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. So what we don't currently have a commissioner attending MC Iris, which was sort of our in previously. And obviously Don, who is a 
former commissioner was doing a lot of volunteering with Weed Grammars anyway, so it was very easy for us to um, have that communication connection. But since we don't have somebody at MC Iris uh, on the regular, I would love to have anybody who's a volunteer who would like to volunteer to reach out to them to say, okay, what are the dates? Who at the EC would be interested in participating in the Weed Wrangle? Do we want to reach out to another commission like Becos or something like that to be involved as well? And and try and get something like that on the books. I know that we are in the throes of, well, this week maybe not, but we are we're moving into that really miserable weather. So I understand that people want to be cautious about heat safety and all of that. That's that's super important for us. But we just talk about doing this, and it's always nice and interesting to get engaged. Does anybody feel compelled to be the contact person for getting a weed wrangle going? Oh my God. <gasps> Jinx. <laughs> Except you, you're welcome. I was gonna say I've been. My class works with them oh, daily right crazy. now, so they talk yeah. like I. Sounds <laughs> good. Cool. So maybe if you don't mind, like just kind of maybe doing a call to the EC or anybody interested, and then just kind of finding some dates that they would be open to. Yeah. I'm interested in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we'll probably want to in pretty far. Mm -hmm. so well, well, I know they are very cool. busy, and they have weed wrangles. Most days of the week. Yeah, there's a lot of them. This commission was involved in one about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I decided I didn't want to do it again. So. <laughs> I love it. I'm just desperate to weed things all the time. I'm on the train. It's like, Bleh. I don't have to do on my own property. Yeah. 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 We just do a weed wrangle round of all, just wander around all of our properties, do all the weeding there, and then head out to the trail. And they've lately been doing us. in Crestmont and Winslow Sports Park, they've done a lot of native seedling plantings mm -hmm. to get more trees going in these Nomo areas. Yes. And it's been a really cool, they have a forester who has been coming and like teaching us how to care for all the seedlings. And I learned a lot the last few times I've done it. I love things. Okay, well, thank you for volunteering yeah. to help coordinate it for our group. You are not required to participate in a weed wrangle, but again, it's educational, it's good for our community. It gets, um, gets more of that word out. Um, on some of y'all's agendas, there may still be the WFHB PSA draft, but it is now updated to not be there because it has been far too busy of a week for me to put that together for you. So consider that as a non-agenda item if you're looking at it on your paper. And then from here, we just got our different reports. So I'm happy to turn the mic over to David. Right. Well, the tree commission met this past Monday. Uh, I have an urban forestry report from Haskell Smith. But it's all kind of an outline, and so I, I usually send those on to you, but this time I didn't because it's just outlined. Um, and as you might suppose, the tree commission meeting was mostly talking about uh, tree damage from the big uh, storm. Uh, so Haskell said that uh, in terms of street trees, there have been 250 plus. Uh, street tree failures, and he didn't know how many uh, failures there would be in the in the parks. And I can I, I was walking along the creek in Southeast Park today, and well, several times in the last couple of weeks, and there's major damage in that 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 trail. Um, he said there are probably a thousand trees in the city property and maybe 2,500 for the whole town. And he did say that Winslow Woods was hard hit, uh, especially the big beaches in, in that part. Uh, going down a bit, he said there's a new tree commission member, a guy named Travis Hardy who they thought was an arborist, which would be just great. But um, after being appointed, uh, he hasn't come to the first two meetings. So um, this is not looking good. Um, he mentioned that there's an ongoing um, investigation where uh, T 24D drifted over from 
uh, an adjacent, adjacent farm onto the city's nursery and caused some minor tree damage. And the state chemist has looked into that, but um, at this point, they're not going to sue the guy, but they warned that the farmer should be more careful not to spray any on windy days the way he had done this time. Um, <clears throat> going on, there's a, always a report from the urban forester, there's a report from the Environmental Commission, which is me. <clears throat> so I reported on our last meeting. And then Mia Williams, who's the IU landscape architect, architect is the member there. And she said that IU is now fully staffed. They have three arborists. Um, they were doing storm damage cleanup and spring planting is complete. And one interesting thing was they looked, we looked at a map of the tree damage on the campus here in Bloomington and saw three distinct pathways of tree damage. It sort of looked as if they're not you know, neighbors exactly, but there must have been heavy winds along specific trails, uh, pathways that caused this tree damage. And then there was random uh, damage elsewhere too. And that was kind of the most interesting part of her report. So uh, that's the end of the Tree Commission report. There's nothing to have to report on Iraq or friends of like me not. Okay. Well, thanks for the update from the Tree Commission. I know I've been very curious to hear as they are able to collect staff on how many trees are down. The new was, I think, yeah, level 200 that are um, the, the just street, street trees, trees, but that so there are thousands throughout, mm -hmm. throughout all the different properties. Oh. Um, okay. Well, great. Well, thank you for the reports. Um, okay, so we are on to B Coast, which I know that Karena is no longer attending. Did we have somebody who volunteered to step in mm -hmm. or listen to the meetings for B Coast? Okay. I am going to put myself down to attend it's the second Tuesday of the month, I believe. Um, which I might be out of town for for August, but I will plan to attend the next one that I can um, and then come back with some <laughs> input because the Becos team are very open to to having those uh, conversations of how we can work together. So as we're doing things like preparing the weaver and things like that, we can definitely stay in touch there. Okay. And then MC Iris, we have anybody attending? I, I presumed not, but just before I brush that off the agenda. Linda was doing that. Month. I know. I sure hope she applies for the EC in the future. And before that, Don and I recently got in touch with Don and asked if he, if I could pay him to do some invasive work on our property. And he said, well, he had, he had a very big, heavy dog. And he had been walking the dog and the dog had gone after a deer and, oh. and tipped him over and he had three vertebrae in his back that were damaged. So oh, he didn't want to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's too bad. That's that's so scary. Um, okay. Do you know when they meet regularly? I'm on their website right now, but I'm not finding a like come to our meetings. Yeah, yeah. they meet on the second Wednesdays of the month. Do you know what time that is? Maybe daytime? It's daytime. I wasn't able to attend last week, but it's at 1 p.m. Rachel, are you often attending these MCI meetings? And I, I hope to attend in the future. So, okay. all right. Great. Well, as our team figures out what we can do, yes. I may ask you for what you're hearing later. Okay. 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 Um, okay. We have successfully gone through all the items on our agenda. This is our opportunity for commissioner announcements, whether it's something uh, related to your EC work, your professional work, or any update that you'd like to share. Uh, the table is open. Short one. Uh, you probably read the newspaper seeing that we have a local snake that's proposed for federal and or not proposed, but being studied for the federal endangered species list. And there's a population of the Sycamore Land Trust property. Oh, you know that. What type of snake? 
snake, curtain snake, it's tiny things that size of the garter snake. Spend most of its time underground in wet sites. We're not going to see it. Yeah. All right. Oh, I had something I wanted to shout out. Um, I've been working with the uh, local housing advocacy group recently, and they have some UDO changes that they've been working on getting passed. And I recommended they come here sometime because, uh, you know, housing, carbon footprints, it's kind of going hand in to extent. Yeah. So just uh, be on the lookout for that. Excellent. And if, they, if they'd like to be like formally on the agenda, just let us know. And if they would rather just kind of come and be part of the public comment, they get, you know, it's 20 minutes or so. So actually, no, it's five, maybe five minutes per person. Let me double check that. But they've got um, five minutes per person, the 20 minutes for the um, full segment. So yeah. I'll open that one. Also, uh, I'll be at the farm's market on Saturday for normal stuff. Then. What would you be doing with the farm's market? Advocating for housing. Nice. For the nice. Excellent. Yeah. Um, this is a little broad, but pertinent to the environmental management and regulatory world. So we may see some of this in the next few years. But a few weeks ago, the Supreme Court overturned the Chevron deference rule. Mm -hmm. um, so now regulatory uh, agencies won't have as much. I feel that won't have as much um, say in how they interpret their rules. Um, if Congress hasn't explicitly said what to do. Um, like this will not only affect the EPA, but you know, um, like the FDA. Um, but obviously, I'm most concerned about the EPA. So that should be interesting in the coming years because any disputes over regulations will go to, have to go through the courts um, rather than just letting the EPA and the experts decide what to do. Never mind what the experts do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And happy news. <laughs> Some of in uh, more cheerfulness, I got a picture of a cool bug at work today. If anybody wants to see it. Oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, Instead, but I got a picture of a cool bug in a sample I was working on at work today. Yeah. So it's uh, very large. Uh, and fortunately, very dead. If it was alive, I would not have been. It is? What, what um, it? It's a megalopter larva. So it's a Dobson fly. Um, when they're larvae, they're called helper mites because they're very large and scary looking and will bite if you ever let them have. And this one was about the size of my finger. Ooh, so, but large. like I said, it, yeah, yeah, I think they're yeah. real big. Ooh, um, the adults are. No, yeah. well, air wasn't fine. Uh, three rivers, streams, usually in like high quality waters. This was from, I think, somewhere in northern Indiana that was doing well. But yeah, it's something that if it is a nice stream, we usually find a handful of them. But uh, it's Indiana, so we don't always find that many nice streams. So yeah, they're cool. Um, and also, I always uh, get a little scared when I find a live one that's happening. <laughs> I don't give it that one. Yeah. We find a lot, find a lot of adults at Griffey, and I've never found a single one. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> yeah. Um I somehow